What's up everyone? Steve here again from RC Tanks and Trucks 24-7. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. There's heaps of cool stuff, I think, just like this will be. Now, here we have a mass of parts. Now, all these are available. Check out the link below. They are from Sterling Kit. Now, what you see here is everything you need, pretty much, to get these little Toyan four-stroke motors going. Now, yes, this is my next build. I've done several builds. I've done a rat rod. I've done uh, a truck. I've also done the crawler, which is, has the exact same motor. As this, it's an FSL 200 two cylinder four stroke nitro motor now these are really cool um, they do take a lot of tinkering a lot of parts obviously as you can see to get going so what I'll do I'll show you what I have and uh, maybe what I'm gonna put it in next so first up here is the FSL 200 really cool it's one of their latest motors two cylinder four stroke really cool little motor they perform really good and um, I don't know, and they sound awesome too when you put a little exhaust on them, which I have here as well. I straight piped my uh, Defender, it's damn loud, but I uh, will definitely try these silencers. So first up, you do get an instruction manual, some lubrication for the cams, and the motor itself. Now you can't just jump into these, plug it up, and ready to go. You need a clutch, all that kind of stuff, and that is what I will show you now. But there is the uh, FSL 200, doesn't look cool little red accents, anodized with the black, I think it looks fantastic. So, two cylinder, air cooled, and that is all you need. The fan is all you need to keep it cool. Get uh, asked that a lot of times, and that's, you know, it works well, keeps it in operating temperatures. So, two carburetors, obviously. Cool. You've got to attach a clutch and all that kind of cool stuff at the back, but uh, we'll do that in another video. Don't worry about that. If it's a little bit unlined, you just line it up. That's it. Now, next up is... They release this new four speed transmission, so three speeds forward and one reverse. So I thought, you know what, I'm going to try this out. I think it looks pretty damn cool. They also included springs in the kit as well. I know Dennis, uh, I'll check, I'll leave the link down below. If you think I do cool stuff like cool conversions, check out uh, Dennis. Uh, he does much better than me. He has this already and he's utilizing it in a car. But uh, it does come with springs as well, and that is to kind of keep these key forks in the center so you got one here so you got that's I believe that's three uh, gear three and that's reverse on the other side here you have first second third and fourth now to make it all run correctly I do believe these need to be in the middle so it's in neutral but uh, I'll figure this out in another video but the benefit of this all like stainless steel metal construction and it does also have a brake here at the back so really cool I'll try to make that work. If I don't make that work, I'll definitely be using a Revo 3.3 two-speed forward and reverse transmission because it does have a brake as well. So that's that. Now, because the engine has a brushless starter motor, you need an ESC to start that. So we have different options here. We have this one here, which uh, it's a basic. I believe they're 30 to 40 amp ESC. It's got a push button there to start it. This goes to your glow plug. You got a ground, and which is just there, it goes on the side of the motor. And that is it, you use a LiPo uh, battery to start it. This is just a glow igniter. They are pretty big, and I do hope they will change these in the near future to make them smaller. But that is a glow igniter to keep, you know, because it's got two, you need two of these. With a single cylinder, obviously, you just need one. But with this, you need two of these, so two glow plugs. You also have this setup, which is pretty much the same, just kind of a different configuration. But uh, you can see, very similar. It's got a little starter system there. And you start it, once it's started, it's all good to go. You can disconnect the batteries once the glows are ignited, but I've just left them going, and I've had no real issues uh, so far. Need a fuel tank, and all the associated fuel tubing and stuff like that to go with it. Now, you know, you might have that in your collection already, but obviously you do need to get all this, so that's a necessity, you do need a fuel tank. Now, I saw these. These look pretty damn cool. Now, these are mufflers and silencers as well. Now, you can get dual stage you can put another one on the end of this to quiet it down even more but this is just a single stage muffler 
but it does have like a matting material inside it. Now it's quite hard to see, but it is actually like a normal muffler for a car. So that'd be cool to see. Now I have two of these because I'm not too sure what I'm going to be doing if I run this setup or you yeah, have this setup as well. These are exhausts as well. I think they look pretty damn cool. Now with these, you don't need to run the whole copper pipe. You can just run plastic tubing from the manifold straight to the exhaust so it's much easier to manipulate the shape of the car and get it out to the back or whatever you want to do with it. Now these are exhausts as well. Pretty damn cool. Look like little pea shooters. Much smaller than these but these look quite large. Maybe not to scale depending on what you want to do with them but I think they would look cool. So we have these as well. So that is something to keep in mind otherwise on my crawler build I just did straight uh, like brass tubing I believe so you need an exhaust air filter you don't want to get any debris in that motor I'm guilty of running them without these because they fall off sometimes so that's something I'm more conscious of in the future this is like a T-way for the fuel to go in because it is dual carburetor you need you know to go either way and then one inlet or inlet to the yeah, to the fuel tank two glow plugs obviously and these are type F and these are for four stroke motors and very importantly you need a clutch so I'm not too sure how many teeth this is maybe 16 tooth but you need a clutch is a generic style aluminium clutch shoes you got a bit of thread lock here this is a whole pack it includes like a flywheel but you're not going to be using this um, it, it has a clutch nut screws and also your ball bearings here as well you can also get different sizes um, just like the, or you can just buy the clutch bells separately as well, such as the clutch nut here. So, pretty cool. And there are a lot of parts, but the fun of this hobby is making this all work. And I've done that pretty successfully with my mills. So, what am I going to be putting all this into? Well, here is a Sen F450 custom truck. It's a 110 scale, and normally it's too small. But this thing is mammoth. It's huge. It's really long. And heaps of room I believe to put all this stuff in now that's the problem with all this you need like you know a couple batteries you need servos three to four servos and especially with this transmission I do believe you need two servos alone to run it so you need obviously one to keep it in neutral and then one to change it from third to new to reverse or vice versa so that's two servos alone then you need a steering servo a throttle and brake servo so it gets up there so I thought maybe this might be a good candidate, and if not, let me know. Or if you have any other ideas, let me know so you can see how much room we have. Now, I've already done a video. I actually replaced this with a quick run fusion setup. Now, this is sick, but as you can see, there's a lot of room here. So, obviously, the motor's going to go here in between these uh, braces here. So, you've got the motor that's going to go there, a gearbox roughly there, or this way. And as you can see, it looks pretty damn long because this car is a dually and a pickup. So it's got a lot of room at the back, but it's got a kind of a cool little setup here. Now, I'm not too sure. I might be able to make this work. I, I just might be able to, and I think it would be cool having this in this. So uh, I think it might be, I might try it. I'm not too sure. What do you guys think? Any other options? Now, I do also have another... Land Rover, I can put that in, but that's already been done. If you have been living on the rock and watching my channel, this is my Land Rover. As you can see, that's a Toyan as well. FSL 200, there is the Revo transmission, and these work really, really well. Four-wheel drive, two-speed forward and reverse, and as you can see, it's a lot. Now, when you consider this, it's skinnier but I might be able to make it work. I'm not too sure. Otherwise, like I said, I've got another one of these as well that I might be able to kind of fit everything in there. But uh, yeah, look at these. Check out these while I'm here. See, I've done just a normal tubed exhaust here, straight pipe. You can put these down the bottom as well. That'd look pretty damn cool. Much quieter as well because this is really loud. But uh, yeah, I don't know. What do you guys think? Give me some options. I think it would be pretty cool in this. Maybe like a tow it trailer or something behind it like a scale boat I'm not too sure um, because these motors they, they've pretty much only been in crawlers and the issue with that is it's because of the chassis you need like a scale chassis and, uh, and that's why crawlers are good because they've got the chassis rails if, oh sorry 
I digress. You can put this in anything, like any Nitro RC or like any existing one with a flat, normal style chassis, but that looks boring because I'd like these under the bonnet to look scaled. I wanted to have them halfway in the chassis like a normal, like an on-road car. Just looks silly in, in my opinion. One of them to look scaled, that's the whole point of these. That's why these crawlers work because they've got the chassis rails, you can sit them in between the chassis rails, um, you know, on either side of the suspension. So I've been thinking, I would like to get a road car even, or a, oh, like a rally one, that small scale, but you need, you know, like the A-arms on the, off the side, just like a real car, not uh, having a massive flat part, then you've got this huge section here for the steering mechanism, that's why it gets pretty difficult, but that's why we use these, so all you need to do with these normally is kind of re, you know, relocate the servo somewhere up the front, out of the way, and, uh, you know, we just make it work on the side, whatever, all this goes, obviously, for your transmission and brake, but uh, you can definitely make it work. So these, these do take time, believe me, they're not a, it's not a sort of walk in the park, you have to kind of sit, scratch your head, lose a bit of hair, I don't have any, any more, but uh, you definitely can make them work if you really want to. Like I said, Dennis has done heaps of cool stuff, I'll leave the link for his channel, please go check it out, tell him Steve sent you, because, you know, he does, <laughs> he does heaps of cool stuff, and he does it kind of professionally, not like, uh, I don't think, like, not like me. But uh, please guys, give me some suggestions down below, what do you think I should put this in? I'm thinking the Sen F450, but uh, yeah, it's just got to think of options where the, it has chassis rails on the side, and it's quite large because it, you know, it do gets pretty big. And plus, once you get all the the piping, the the batteries, it takes a lot of room. And I, I was wanted to put it in the FS um, Jeep, but uh, it's not enough room once you close it all down. So, all right, guys, I think I've waffled on a bit too much. If you're interested in these parts, links are down below, go check it out. But as always, hope you enjoyed the video. If you haven't, please subscribe and like the video. But uh, see you in the next one, guys. Have a good one.